Peace, family. Um, I pray all are well. I just wanted to touch bases um, and share my thoughts on... I just read this article from the Los Angeles Times. Um, it was published yesterday, July 31st, 2019. You see, that's your boy, Lil Nas X. The title of this LA Times article is Lil Nas X came out but has hip hop. A macho culture faces a crossroads. And when I read this article, it was very interesting. Very interesting. In short, this article more or less proclaims the queering of hip hop. Um, it makes some interesting observations that I want to comment on. It says, you know, it condemns hip hop before today as homophobic. It says hip hop's refusal to embrace anything queer has been a blemish on the genre for as long as it's been around. Rap culture has always been powered by unbridled machismo and one would be hard pressed to not find a gay slur embedded in the lyrics of any of the genre's most famous architects. So historically, hip hop is homophobic. And it says this, LA Times says, but as an old guard has been replaced by a younger generation, unconcerned with rigid labels and unbothered by genre, today's rap and R&B scene isn't as exclusively heteronormative as it once was. The article cites Frank Ocean and Tyler, the creator, and others in hip hop and R&B who have come out as queer. Now, interesting, while this article is celebrating the coming out of black male queers in hip hop in this successful more or less queering of hip hop on that score they mention queer female rappers they mention or performers they mention Janelle Monet, Halsey, Young and May, and Kilani. But they don't mention Nicki Minaj. In fact, they have Nicki Minaj here as more or less a homophobe or, or as having made some homophobic remarks, which is real interesting because Nicki Minaj was initially promoted as a queer rapper as a gay rapper. And I think that was the label. It never stuck with Nicki Minaj because she clearly isn't gay. So the gay Nicki Minaj just disappeared. I think that was a label move to queer Nicki Minaj and make her the female rapper gay sensation. But it, it didn't stick. So they, they aren't even mentioning her, though. She was promoted as a gay rapper. But they don't mention her here. Except they do mention her, but as guilty of a homophobic statement. So, um, 
the article proclaims hip hop is at quote hip hop is at its queerest right now with Lil Nas X coming out and with all of the queer rappers coming forward LA Times is declaring that right now hip hop is at its queerest it's real interesting. Um, the queering of hip hop. Now, I just wanted to share. Uh, when did this happen? I believe, actually, family. Uh, we can identify the beginning of the process, official process, of the queering of hip hop. And I believe the official queering of hip hop began in 1996. It was four years after the LA riots, which shook this country because the LA riots were not supposed to happen. Those that have followed my work know that um, I document how the decade of the 60s was characterized by violent turnups, riots around the country, and the government quelled the explosions, quelled, quieted the inner cities by biochemically uh, neutralizing or attempting to biochemically neutralize what they described as hostile black masculinity. So while the <clears throat> 60s had so many riots and urban rebellions, the 70s, 80s, uh, almost none, the government successfully quieted the black rage of the inner city. So 92 wasn't supposed to happen. LA 92 wasn't supposed to happen. And when it did, they had to reconsider their, um, their methods. In 1996, what happens? 1996 marks the birth of what I'm calling Molly Rap. I am saying that much of Rap today can be called Molly Rap. Not that every song name drops Molly, but I'm explaining why I am describing much of hip hop as Molly Rap. Because Molly was introduced into hip hop in 1996. In 1996, um, you hear, we first hear Molly being name dropped in songs, 96, 97, 98, The Roots, E-40, Big, Jay-Z and Reservoir Dogs. Beginning in 96, Molly is being name dropped in hip hop records, but black folks weren't using Molly then. Life would start to imitate art. 96, 97, 98, for the first time, Molly is name dropped. Starting in 2002, Songs are named after Ecstasy or Molly. Molly wasn't named drop Ecstasy at the time. 96, 97, Ecstasy. But same drug, MDMA. Bone Thugs and Harmony dropped the first song named Ecstasy. They dropped it in 2000. 
then Ja Rule, Big Timers, Missy Elliott, D12, Tech 9, 2000, between 2002. All of these songs now are named Ecstasy, or Ecstasy is in the title. So from being name dropped, beginning in 96, beginning, beginning in 2000, Ecstasy, or MDMA, is gracing the titles of hip hop, big hip hop songs. Mm. Now what's interesting, the first such song titled Ecstasy was Bone Thugs and Harmony, that song Ecstasy. Now, <laughs> check this out. Busy Bone said in a 2000 article in Vibe, Busy Bone, who of course is on the song Ecstasy, Busy Bone says, after his verses were laid, or his verse was laid, he asked to have his verse removed from the song. Why? He said, quote, I don't do that shit. Never tried it. I just thought I'd be sending a bad message. So Busy Bone didn't do Ecstasy. But he's on the song Ecstasy, rapping about doing Ecstasy. So he wanted his lyrics off of the song. Of course, that didn't happen. And listen to what he says. Vibe quotes him as saying, they say, quote, Busy sees a sinister force behind the rise in ecstasy use. Busy Bone, why do you see a sinister force behind the rise of ecstasy use in hip hop? You are right. Listen, listen to what he says. He says, <clears throat> He can't get down with the drugs, lovey-dovey, non-assertive vibes. He says, quote, that's some feminine ass shit. This is Busy Bone talking about the effect he sees of rappers using or popping pills, using ecstasy. He says, that's some feminine ass shit. Make a motherfucker act all sweet. Excuse my language. That's I'm just reading it. Make a MF or act all sweet. He says, anytime or anything, listen, listen to Busy Bone, who has a verse on the first song, hip hop song named after Ecstasy. He says, anything that makes a man want to drop to his knees and give another man fellatio, something ain't right. Unless he's already like that. Well, um, end quote. MDMA was designed, current version of MDMA was designed by Alexander Shulchin. He resynthesized MDMA, even though the drug itself was uh, produced in 1912 by Merck, but they produced a different version. In 1965, Alexander Shulchin, who was a government employed scientist, resynthesized MDMA and he said that um, his purpose was to create a drug that accentuated sensuality. This is why Molly or ecstasy is called this famous love drug. It has an effect on the body that emphasizes sensuality in women and in men. Um, Molly long use of MDMA, it depletes serotonin and we documented in our book, Understanding the Assault on the Black Man, that by depleting serotonin, brain serotonin, this chemical, you can produce hypersexuality and homosexuality. MDMA triggers the release of oxytocin, the cuddle hormone. It makes you all touchy-feely. 
and non-discriminate in terms of gender and ecstasy or MDMA reduces testosterone. So this particular drug, MDMA, was produced by its originator, Alexander Shulgin. This synthesis was specifically made to um, make the user hypersensual and non-discriminating gender-wise. So, Busy Bone's observations that these people, these men, popping these pills and acting all feminine and even engaging in homosexual sex, he wasn't bugging. He wasn't bugging at all. That's what MDMA was resynthesized by Alexander Shulgin to bring out. The Vibe article says, as long as E is involved ecstasy, as long as E is involved, even the most hardened thug will give more smiles than ice grills, more back rubs than beat downs. This was in 2000. As ecstasy, started being name dropped in 1996, but black folks weren't using ecstasy. We had to be put on to ecstasy, ecstasy, MDMA. It had to be imposed on us and our music was a vehicle through which MDMA was pushed on us. Our music marketed, was used to market MDMA to us. So by 2003, remember um, Cube's verse on West Side Connection song, So Many Rappers in Love. Cube said, stop using the drugs. Ecstasy make you niggas soft thugs. That's in 2003. So you see with the introduction of Molly, of MDMA, you got this, what they say? What uh, vibe say? The love drug has got hip hop's hard not life getting soft around the edges. So you seeing that now, introduction of MDMA is being marketed through our music to us and high school black children are using it they have traced the trend with the name dropping of the drug in our hip-hop and the increased use of the drug among young black people <clears throat> and then it got to it got by 2010 the Los Angeles Times was reporting that ecstasy has reached a critical mass in hip hop. So by 2010, this process started or the rap game influenced by the presence of Molly. Even if you not name dropping Molly, even if you're not rapping about Molly, but from 96 to today, hip hop, the whole game has to one degree come under the influence of this Molly operation. Those who introduced, who determined to introduce Molly to black people through hip hop to mollify, mm, that's a good one, mollify hip hop. That process began in 96 and by 2010 they were proclaiming that ecstasy has reached a critical mass in hip hop then in 2013, Rap Rehab announced this, quote, Molly overtakes weed in music culture. Now, you know, the blunt has always been the, not always, not always, I can't say, no, not always. But in the 90s, the blunt became the staple of hip hop culture, did at least certain strong genres of hip-hop the blunt 
the blunt and the mic, they went hand in hand for a long time. But in 2013, Rap Rehab announced that Molly overtook the blunt, overtook weed and hip hop. The love drug overtook the blunt as the drug of choice for hip hop, the love drug. Wow. The drug that accentuates, accentuates sensuality, non-gender discriminating sensuality. You gonna be what they designed it for, for the user to be able to be sensual, sensual with who, whomever, male or female. And so from 2013, it's announced Molly overtakes weed and hip hop. And then in 2019, <laughs> LA Times announces that uh, hip hop is at its queerest moment right now. Hip hop let uh, LA Times tell it. Hip hop has been queered. It's real interesting. Where does hip hop go from here? Hip hop, they say, they're applauding a redefining of masculinity in hip hop. Getting rid of the macho male of hip hop. Because he's a homophobe. Being replaced by a nice queer black guy. So the queer black guy will become the icon of hip hop. Now, is, is that what, <clears throat> what we're looking at? Is that where we're going? But I just wanted to share my thoughts on the queering of hip hop that is more or less announced here and shed light on the process. I'm suggesting that the process of the, of the queering of hip hop that culminated with this rap icon is how they describe Lil Nas X coming out as gay on the last day of Pride Month after having the number one single for so long. He came out as gay and the world is celebrating as a result this moment of the queering of hip hop. I'm suggesting that the process of the queering of hip hop began in 1996. And we can map the stages of how hip hop was queered and it was done chemically. First, once they mollified hip hop, once they introduced this love drug made this love drug, the hip hop drug of choice. And so future and all these people talking about Molly, yay and all of them talking about doing Molly. So still you hear now Lil Nas X, you know, on his single, he don't talk about Molly. I, I don't know if, an, if in other tracks he does, but of course he talks about lean and lean that codeine, um, is an anti-testosterone. The codeine and the lean is a anti-testosterone. So he's so young, depending on how long he's been drinking lean, ingesting that codeine, um, yeah, that anti-testosterone, the anti-testosterone effects of codeine um, can be uh, determinative.
for a young male drinking that. So, still you hear Molly dominating the hip hop or well, music. They still name dropping hip hop. So the uh, name dropping Molly, the biggest artist, even though even if they don't do it like that, Future said he don't even do drugs the way he rap about. It. He don't do pills the way he rap about it. Yet he raps about it, just like. Busy Bone rapped about popping pills, but he didn't pop pills. So this process of the querying of hip hop, I'm suggesting, really began with in 1996 with the beginning of the mollifying, molly, mollifying of hip hop. What once hip hop became. Not just a drug slinging culture, at least in the myth of hip hop, from the lyrics. Lyrical hip hop, as hip hop as we get it from the lyrics of the 90s. Hip hop was a drug slinging culture. So once hip hop transitioned from and not on the song, once hip hop was transitioned from a drug slinging culture, those dominant aspects of it, West Coast gangster rap and East Coast gangster rap. Look, call it mafia, mafioso rap, whatever. Wu Tang, Big, gun, sex, drugs, kill a nigga. That's gangster, whether you want to call it that or not. So West Coast and East Coast, the drug slinging, when the culture was transitioned from drug a drug slinging culture to a drug using culture, now the culture brags about drug consumption and being addicts. Once that transition was made, it was inevitable that hip hop would be queered and according to the la times drop yesterday uh we now live in a moment hip-hop's queerest moment they celebrate it <laughs> what about you more thoughts later peace fam